Yes. <laughs> um, so now, now you all are muted, which is good because there was a delay in the transmission of the sound. So my singing or our singing here was not in sync with your singing. So now we'll, we'll resume our kirtan.
Tulsi Devi ki jai, Bhakti Devi ki jai, Samveta Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. Nitai Gaur Premanande Kritivo. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories, all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Goranga. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. So we shall read from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 2, Divinity and Divine Service, Text 18. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. 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 Bhaktivedas, can you get the Bhagavatam from my table there? Because this one is. Nasta praeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavat yutama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki Nasta praeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavat yutama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki Nashta, destroyed. Prayeshu, almost to nil. Abhadreshu, all that is inauspicious. Nityam, regularly. Bhagavata, Srimad Bhagavatam or the pure devotee. Sevaya, by serving. Bhagavati, unto the personality of Godhead. Uttama, transcendental. Shloke, prayers. Bhakti, loving service. Bhavati, comes into being. Naishtiki, irrevocable, irrevocable. Translation, by regular attendance in classes on the Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving service unto the personality of Godhead, who is praised with transcendental songs, is established as an irrevocable fact. This verse is very important and it has a personal significance to me because when we were serving Srila Prabhupada in India in 1971 in Calcutta, uh, Srila Prabhupada was keeping us so busy in service that I didn't have time to read his books. And I was feeling guilty. 
So one day I was sitting in front of him in his room in Calcutta. That uh, <laughs> room is still there. And I didn't say anything about my not reading, but Srila Prabhupada must have read my mind. And he quoted this verse. And he said that by serving the person Bhagavat, you get the same result as by reading the book Bhagavat. And all the truths of the book Bhagavat will be real, will be revealed to you, even if you do not read the book. Of course, under ordinary circumstances, we do want to read the Bhagavatam. And in many letters, Srila Prabhupada advised his followers to read for one hour a day. Sometimes he recommended that we read for three hours a day. So we want to read. But at that time in India, Srila Prabhupada had us so fully engaged that I really didn't have time to read. And he quoted this verse and he said that by, by serving the person Bhagavat, you get all the results of reading the book Bhagavat. And all the truths of the book Bhagavat will be revealed to you. And there's a, uh, a, a related verse, Yasya Deve Parabhaktir Yuta Deve Tataguro, that to one who has unflinching faith in the spiritual master and similar faith in the Supreme Personality of Godhead, all the truths of the Vedas are revealed. So now uh, we'll, we'll read the purport. By Srila Prabhupada. Here is the remedy for eliminating all inauspicious things within the heart, which are considered to be obstacles in the path of self-realization. So what are the inauspicious things in the heart of Bhadrashu? Uh, the first is identifying with the body. Uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu prays Cheto Darpano Marjanam, uh, that by performance of Sankirtan, uh, the, the dirt, is uh, cleansed from uh, the mirror of the mind or heart. And Srila Prabhupada raises the question, what are those dirty things? And, and, and the first dirty thing uh, or misconception is identifying with the body. And once we identify with the body, we engage in so many activities for the benefit of the body or the senses. Um, but actually these, <laughs> these activities are inauspicious. So, here is the remedy for eliminating all inauspicious things within the heart, which are considered to be obstacles in the path of self-realization. The remedy is the association of the Bhagavatas. 
there are two types of Bhagavatas, namely the book Bhagavata and the devotee Bhagavata. Both the Bhagavatas are competent remedies and both of them or either of them can be good enough to eliminate the obstacles. A devotee Bhagavata is as good as the book Bhagavata because the devotee Bhagavata leads his life in terms of the book Bhagavata. And the book Bhagavata is full of information about the personality of Godhead and his pure devotees, who are also Bhagavatas. Bhagavat book and person are identical. Now, it is important that we receive the book Bhagavata from the person Bhagavata. There was a, a poet from Bengal who came to Jagannath Puri to read his uh, co poetic composition to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And the rule was that anyone who wanted, uh, you know, to, to read a composition to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu first had to uh, place it before uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's personal secretary, Swarup Damodar Goswami. So the poet from Bengal made mistakes in his, in his poetry. And Swarup Damodar Goswami advised him, Bhagavata Gya Pora Bhagavata Stane. One should hear and study the Srimad Bhagavatam from the person Bhagavat. And he, he further advised him, Yaha Bhagavata Pada Vaishnavera Stane Ekanta Ashraya Kara Chaitanya Charane. If you want to understand Srimad Bhagavatam, you must approach a self-realized Vaishnav and hear from him. So, and um, Srila Sanatan Goswami, uh, quoting from the Padma Purana, advises, a Vaishnava Mukodgirnam Patam Harikatam Ritam Shravanam Naiva Kartavyam Saropishtam Yatapaya. One should not hear about Krishna from a non Vaishnava. Uh, Hari Katamritam. Uh, Hari means Krishna, Kata means talks, and Amrita means nectar. So talks about Krishna are nectar. But we should not hear such talks from non-Vaishnavas. One should not hear anything about Krishna from a non-Vaishnava. Milk touched by the lips of a serpent has poisonous effects. So milk is like nectar 
But if it's touched by the lips of a ser serpent, that nectar becomes like poison. And similarly, talks about Krishna given by a non-Vaishnav are also poisonous. So now we come back to the purport. The devotee Bhagavat is a direct representative of Bhagavan, the personality of Godhead. So by pleasing the devotee Bhagavat, one can receive the benefit of the book Bhagavat. Human reason fails to understand how by serving the devotee Bhagavat or the book Bhagavat, one gets gradual promotion on the path of devotion. But actually, these are facts explained by Srila Narada Dev, who happened to be a maid servant's son in his previous life. The maid servant was engaged in the menial service of the sages and thus her son Narada also came into contact with them. And simply by associating with them and accepting the remnants of foodstuffs left by the sages, the son of the maidservant got the chance to become the great devotee and personality, Srila Narada Dev. These are the miraculous effects of the association of Bhagavatas. So here Srila Prabhupada gives a very vivid and powerful example of how Bhagavat Seva, serving uh, the, the, the Bhagavatas, the, the, the pure devotees, can have miraculous effects. So much so that, uh, the, that the boy Narada, just by serving the Bhagavatas, uh, by, by taking the remnants of their foodstuffs and hearing their talks about Krishna. Although coming from a very humble beginning, uh, this boy became the great devotee Narada just by the association of Bhagavatas. And we can see in our own experience what was our position before we met Srila Prabhupada, the pure devotee, and how our lives became transformed or revolutionized by the service of the, of the pure devotee, Srila Prabhupada. These are the miraculous effects of the association of Bhagavatas. And to understand these effects practically, it should be noted that by such sincere, sincere, that by such sincere association of the Bhagavatas, one is sure to receive transcendental knowledge very easily. And the result is that he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. So this word fixed, which Srila Prabhupada uses in the purport, ref refers to naishtiki, uh, irrevocable. Uh, 
there are different stages in the development of devotional service as uh, enumerated by uh, Sri Rupa Goswami in his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Ado Shraddha Tata Sadhu Sangha Tabajana Kriya. Tato Nartha Navritti Syat Tato Nishta. Here we're discussing that stage of Nishta. Tato Nishta Ruchis Tata. Ata saktis tato bhavas, tata premya dudanchati, sadakanam ayam premna, pradur bhave bhavet krama. So, ado shraddha, in the beginning there should be faith, tata thereafter. Sadhu Sangha, association with pure devotees. Atta Bhajana Kriya, performance of devotional service to Krishna. Tata Anartha Nivritti, the diminishing of all unwanted habits. So this Anartha Nivritti is achieved by the association of the Bhagavatas, uh, by hearing Srimad Bhagavat, uh, hearing uh, the, or reading the book Bhagavat and serving the person Bhagavat. That results in Anartha Nivritti, the eradication of Anarthas or unwanted habits or unwanted. Uh, characteristics. Syat tata nishta, firm faith. And so this nishta, as, as it's, it's, it's related to the word naishtiki in the verse. Uh, nishta uh, being, well, it's like firm faith. Which is, which is so strong that one cannot be deviated. Srila Prabhupada gave the example of uh, little Saraswati, who was the daughter of uh, Shamsundra Prabhu and Malati Devi. She was just a little girl and some, someone told her that she should not chant Hare Krishna, that, that she's just wasting her time by chanting. And that little girl, Saraswati, gave that man a slap in the face. And Srila Prabhupada cited that as an example of nishta, firm faith, she could not be deviated. So, yes. Uh, then ruchi, taste. Then ashakti, ashakti, attachment. Then bhava, uh, ecstasy, and prema. Uh, pure love of Godhead. And Rupa Goswami says, um, Pradur Bhave Bhavet Krama. This is the uh, uh, chronological order of, of, of the stages of spiritual advancement in, in the Sadaka. Uh, and the devotee practicing Krishna consciousness. Um, but getting past Anartha Nivritti and coming to the stage of Nishta is very important. Up until Anartha Nivritti, there are a lot of obstacles and struggles 
But when one passes an artha nivritti and and comes to uh, to nishta, uh, then one is fixed, and then one's progress is uh, is clear. It, it, it's open. And uh, as as Srila Prabhupada says in the first sentence of the purport, here is the remedy for eliminating all uh, inauspicious things within the heart, which are considered to be obstacles in the path of self-realization. So now coming back to the purport. Uh, after describing how Narada became so exalted just by associating with the Bhagavatas, serving them, taking the remnants of their food, hearing their talks about Srimad Bhagavatam, he became the great devotee and personality, Srila Narada Dev. These are the miraculous effects of the association of Bhagavatas. And to understand these effects practically, it should be noted that by such sincere association of the Bhagavatas, one is sure to receive transcendental knowledge very easily with the result that he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Yes, when we have transcendental knowledge, we become fixed. No more wavering or oscillating between material life and spiritual life. The more progress is made in devotional service under the guidance of the Bhagavatas, the more one becomes fixed in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. The messages of the book Bhagavat, therefore, have to be received from the devotee Bhagavat. This, this we have discussed uh, yeah, with, in the positive sense, quoting uh, Srila Saurabh Damodar Goswami, uh, that one should hear uh, the, the book Bhagavat from the person Bhagavat. And on the, on the negative side from the Padma Purana as quoted by Srila Sanatana Goswami, that one should not hear from a non-Vaishnava. The messages of the book Bhagavat therefore, have to be received from the devotee Bhagavat. And the combination of these two Bhagavatas will help the neophyte devotee to make progress on and on. On and on it implies through these different stages Nishta, Ruchi, Ashakti, Baba, and ultimately Prema, which is our goal, Prema, Pumartha, Mahan. It is the uh, ultimate goal of life, Krishna Prema. So now uh, we have some time left and we can uh, take questions and comments. The uh, participants, of course, they may have been sending their questions in, in the chat box, but still, uh, I would say you can raise your hand, your physical hand or your virtual hand, and we will be happy to hear from you and respond to you. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Thank you Hare very Krishna. much for the wonderful class. 
I am reading out the questions uh, typed in by the devotees in the chat. Uh, Vrindavan Chandra Prabhu he is asking, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, why does the verse say almost completely eradicated? It almost indicates that service to the person Bhagavad is not powerful enough to remove all unwanted things in the heart, which we know cannot be true. So his question is, why does the verse say almost completely eradicated? Yes, um, because we're discussing uh, different stages of advancement. And this verse uh, relates to the stage of Nishta. And at this stage, uh, Srila Prabhupada uh, translates that uh, almost to nil as 75%. So at this stage, uh, it's, it's good. It's good almost to nil uh, praya. Praya means almost. Nashta prayachi. Abhadrachi. All that is inauspicious in the heart is destroyed almost to nil. And by this, by passing through this stage, then one will proceed to the next stages. And in the, in the subsequent stages, the remaining 25% will be uh, destroyed, will be eradicated. It's a good question. Thank you very much, Mara. Malati Mataji is asking, Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, I wanted to ask a question. You said that the first step to self-realization is not to identify with one's body, but we see that till the last breath, we are attached to the body. How do we see? Uh, so how do we see this, how it is the first step? Well, uh, as Sri Prahlad uh, says, Nate Vidu Swartha Gatim to Vishnu, that people do not know what their real self interest is. Uh, it's natural to be concerned with one's self interest, but one should know what one's self is. You know, is it the uh, body or is it the soul? within the body. Well, it's, the, of, of course we know it's the soul within the body, that's our real self. And therefore our self interest is um, to act for the benefit of the soul, which, which really means to connect the soul through yoga. Here we were discussing anarthas um, anartha upasamam shakshat bhakti yogam adhokshite, that all anarthas can be destroyed through the linking process of devotional service. So, I mean, yes, we may be attached to the body, but because you know you're not the body, therefore you are endeavoring to make progress in spiritual life. If you thought you were the body, you wouldn't be interested in spiritual life, You'd be interested in material life. And, um, and then again, why are you attached to the body? Are you attached for sense gratification or are you attached for devotional service? Because the body is uh, the, the means through which we serve Krishna. And um, as Srila Prabhupada often said, we want to keep uh, 
the body and soul together. We want to keep the body fit for serving Krishna. So being attached to the body is not bad. If it's, if it's ultimately attachment for Krishna's service which I'm sure it is in your case. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So I have unmuted the, the participants and uh, I've asked them to raise their hand to ask a question. Good. So I would request uh, Kajal Mataji to ask her question. Kajal Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my most respectful obeisances onto your lotus feet. Guru Maharaj, you were talking about uh, attachment to the body. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I feel I am uh, very much attached to like not only my body, but uh, maybe material happiness or things like that. So at times I am very afraid of... Uh, having uh, like getting hurt or uh, suffering in life so i that causes a lot of hindrance in my spiritual life that many times i just uh, don't engage in some kind of sevas because i think i might not be good at them and i don't uh, want to like get hurt uh, so how can i re let go of this fear of uh, you know suffering so that it does not cause hindrance in my life sorry the question was a lot confusing but sorry there's two parts of the question one is uh you're you're afraid that you won't be good enough yes, and that is not uh of course we want to do the best we can, but we cannot wait until we come to the stage of, of, of super excellence. As His Holiness Tamal Krishna Goswami used to say, the worst round you chant is better than the best round you don't chant. So just do what you can, do the best you can and, and, and do it. As far as being afraid of getting hurt, um, what, what do you mean by that? I, uh, I simply mean, Guru Maharaj, that I don't want any negative experience in my life. I only want to have the positive one. So I... Well, that's natural, that's natural. But for that, you'll have to go back to Godhead because as long as you're in the material world, there is duality, you know, pleasure and pain, happiness and distress. You can't avoid it. And therefore Krishna advises in the Bhagavad Gita to uh, Bharata, you have to tolerate. There will be, there will be dualities, and you have to tolerate, and and go on with your devotional service. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Oh, Omkar has his hand up. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Pranat Pranam, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, I had the question that uh, how can we get the association of Bhagavatas and serve them sincerely? Because sometimes we may get, but at the same time we may not serve sincerely. And it's so difficult to get the association of such devotees also. Okay. So how should we get and then it still goes ahead uh, you know, uh, with minimal interruptions uh, you know and uh... 
Omkar, can you put on your camera? Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Yes, Maharaj. Yes. So now, um, can you repeat your question? Uh, Maharaj, I was saying that uh, how can we get the association of Bhagavatas and uh, serve them sincerely? Okay. Uh, where are you geographically? Uh, I'm in Pune. Pune? <laughs> yes. <laughs> there are plenty of Bhagavatas in Pune. Yes, yes, Maharaj. But the point is sincerity <laughs> lacks. Yes, sincerity. Well, Srila Prabhupada has given two answers to that question of how to uh, um, be sincere or become sincere. One answer was uh, to follow all of the instructions of the spiritual master, however big or small. So that should be the first thing. And the other answer he gave was to associate with devotees who are sincere. And I'm sure you can find many sincere devotees there. Yes. So, yeah, associate with them and, um, and you'll become more sincere. Yes, I don't say that you're not sincere, but just based on the way you phrase the question, um, you can become sincere by associating with sincere devotees and by following all the instructions of the spiritual master, however big or small. Yes, Maharaj. Okay. Yes, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Are there any more questions or comments? Hare Krishna Maharaj. There is one question by Kartiki Mataji. She okay. Says, Krishna <laughs> is all pure and absolute. Then how in the serpent example, the Bhagavad Katha becomes poison when heard from non-devotee? Please share some insights. Uh, I, I would repeat the same point that uh, that milk is like nectar, but if it's touched by the lips of a serpent, the milk causes poisonous effects. So it's true. Hari Katamrita uh, the, the talks about Krishna are nectar, uh, but they should not be heard from non-devotees. And, and generally, of course, there are different categories of non-devotees, but a common category, because some of them who are gross materialists, they won't be interested in harikata. So generally, the non-devotees who are interested in Harikata are Mayavadis. And, uh, you know, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Mayavadi Basya Suni Sarvahaila Nasha, that, that by hearing the uh, commentaries of the Mayavadis, uh, one spiritual understanding is is uh, destroyed. So, yeah, Harikata is nectar, but the Mayavadis will present it in such a way that ultimately there's no Krishna. You know, that, that ultimately, you know, you become God or some, some, something like that. And that's bad. We don't want to hear that. Uh, I remember 
reading a letter from Srila Prabhupada before he came to America and began ISKCON, while he was in India, a, uh, a Mayavadi was giving a Bhagavat Saptaha in Bombay. And the Mayavadi invited Srila Prabhupada to, to come and attend. And Srila Prabhupada wrote him that not only will I not attend, but I will tell everyone else I know not to attend. Because we don't want to hear from Maya bodies. Yeah. So that's, I would say, the, the, the main context in which the uh, injunction applies not to hear from non devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Marge, there is one uh, question. Korostova uh, Mataji, can you ask your question? Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Do you hear me? Yes, yes. I just re reject my questions, but it happens. <laughs> okay, then I just want to uh, comment. If we are reading or listening uh, Srila Prabhupada's lectures, is, it is the same way to self, um, uh, self, um, say, self awareness. Yes, it means that um, regarding this uh, text from Bhagavad. Um, how can we manage this? We can read the Bhagavad and uh, also listen, listening Shil Prabhupada's lectures, your lectures, and other devotees' uh, lectures also, senior devotees. Yes, it is the same. Yeah. Yes, as you know, there are two ways of associating Vani, which means by sound or words, and Vapu which means by a body, a physical association. And by, um, by, yeah, reading Srila Prabhupada's books, hearing his lectures, or those of other devotees following Srila Prabhupada, you are associating with them by, by Vani. And um, as, as Srila Prabhupada says, uh, Vapu may or may not be available, but Vani is always there. Yes. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Jai. Hare Krishna. Maharaj, can we have uh, a couple of more questions? Yes. So, Shobha Radha Mataji, can you ask a question? Shobha Radha Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Srila Prabhupada, all grace to your divine lotus feet. Um, I had a question. You said that uh, we should not listen or uh, listen about Krishna from non devotees. Uh, today I had gone to a family's place, uh, a family uh, where there were non devotees, and I was discussing with them about Krishna. One of the Mataji is very interested in Krishna consciousness. So, is that okay when you are telling them about Krishna consciousness and you do discuss with them about Krishna and there are, there's like the others are non devotees. Is it okay to talk to them about Krishna and listen to them about Krishna? Uh, yes. I mean, what we want to avoid is hearing discourses from non devotees. But if you meet with non devotees to tell them about Krishna, and of course, there will be naturally some uh, discussion. So that hearing from non-devotees is not prohibited because you're just conversing with them. And, and that's how non-devotees become devotees. 
Uh, there are times that they say things which are not Krishna conscious, uh, which is um, about Krishna. Is that okay to hear while we are preaching? Even though we tell them uh, about Krishna conscious, but there are times that they say things which are not Krishna conscious. Is that fine? Well, of course. Of course they'll say things that are not Krishna conscious because they're not devotees yet, but you're trying to make them devotees. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Is there any other question any devotee would like to ask? We can have one final question before we end the session. Anybody? Malati Mataji, can you ask? very far away from my wrist that I can't understand most of the things. I try to do it because I know the process that through serving the person hard work, all the knowledge will be revealed unto me. Uh, so I am just following one aspect of uh, devotion service that is serving the person hard work. I am not attached to Krishna. I am not attached to Radharani. I do things which are like Mm. Only for the whole parampara, if I go to three for the whole day, um, I see Sadhu Swami Ashtaga, I'm attached to Nityanand Prabhu, but Krishna is very far away from me. So I just have one aspect. Uh, so, what is my position? Your position is very fortunate. You are. <coughs> But the person Bhagavad will also tell the book Bhagavad. So serving the person Bhagavad doesn't mean just um, you know cooking for him or whatever, but it means following his instructions. So if the person Bhagavad tells you to read the book Bhagavad, then that's also service to the person Bhagavad, to read the book Bhagavad. And you should. You should. Thank you so much. I read, but I don't understand. That's the only thing. It doesn't remain in my mind for a longer period of time. I have to, that's why I hear more rather than reading. I can just read for an hour or so, Guru Maharaj, but not more than that. I can hear and better understand much better. Okay. That's, that's, that's a good balance. Yeah, that's all right. Um, if you improve your japa, you might be able to retain what you read better. Because, yeah, <laughs> that will help you. Uh, yeah, Chetan Darpa no Marginum, cleanse the mirror of the mind. And, um, that, will, that, that will help you to, uh, to remember what you read. And repeating what you read, you get realizations when you repeat what you read. Okay. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hey, Mataji. Hey, Dave Mataji, can you ask? Uh, okay. Yeah, Hare uh, Krishna. I just want to introduce you a little that Hedy is from Iran. He's yeah. very wealthy in Iran. Thank you. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. 
at your own two speed. Uh, do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, Maharaj, um, uh, today we talked about something that I wanted um, to explain to you. Uh, is it correct or not? Uh, and the question was that um, I said to the, the other devotees that whenever um, Whenever we, um, whenever we consider someone as a, a parcel of God, is that we uh, is 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 meaning that we are serving to uh, to that person. Is it correct? Whenever we um, whenever we think um, the one this yeah uh, is it is it uh, do you need more um, explanation or is it enough? Uh, You're saying that you see you see everyone as part and parcel of God. Yes, that's nice. Be that's true. Uh, because um, we talked about um, we talked about Ananda uh, that uh, relation uh, uh, making relation brings you uh, Ananda. Then I said that whenever uh, whenever we think. Um, Whenever uh, we consider someone as a parcel of uh, Krishna, uh, we are making a uh, relation and we are uh, serving actually, both of at the same time. Is it correct? Maybe we don't serve uh, someone, we don't serve uh, someone by, um, by um, I don't know what to say, but just thinking, he or she is a parcel of God, just this. Well, that's good to see everyone as part and parcel of God. And, um, you know, to want to serve others is, is, is also good. And of course, the best service will be to bring them to Krishna. Um, yeah. And, and you do that, you, know, you, you, do, you do a lot of prasad distribution there, which is a, a good service. So, um, yeah, I, I think that's fine. Um, um, actually, I mean that, sorry, because my English is not very well, but uh, I, want, I mean that whenever you think uh, someone or every living being entity is a parcel of Krishna. Is it a is it a serving? Is it and a, is a service? devotional service? Just, Just thinking, yeah, approach, yeah. And Just I thinking. Would, I would say yes. I would say yes because of the nine processes of devotional service. The third is remembering. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam. So if you're seeing people as part and parcel of Krishna, that means you're remembering Krishna. And that's one of the items of devotional service. Yeah, as, as, as also, is it a making relation? Because I because we, we talked about Ananda and we said that Ananda just a result of making relation and serving. And I said, both of them is, uh, happening when you think someone is a parcel of Krishna, making relation as remembering. Yeah, if 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 you if you make a relationship with the devotee, then there will be ananda. Yeah, if you make a relationship with Krishna, or you make a relationship with Krishna's devotees, there will be ananda. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Ayushi Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna. Krishna. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have a question. Like uh, the analogy you told, uh, a milk touched by a serpent becomes poisonous, has poisonous effect. So uh, let's say that we are new to a place and we unknowingly visit a temple, which is 
named as Krishna Balaram Temple, but that is maintained by Rithviks. So, uh, and by, maintained by who? Rithviks. Oh, Rithviks. Yeah. Okay. So, so, uh, and we do not know that it is maintained by them. Like, uh, I will give you an example. Uh, two or three years ago, I went to Vrindavan and a devotee was wearing saffron dress and he was selling some books and he was telling that it is from BBT. And I, I uh, went to him and I told him that I wish to purchase few books from you just because I wanted to serve him like that and I wanted to read more books. So uh, he, but he's uh, in the middle of the conversation, he started speaking things which were not very good. He told me that, uh, you know, we, uh, earlier I was a part of ISKCON and now I am a part of B.V. Narayan Goswami Maharaj. We are followers of them. And it is good. It is comparatively good uh, to be a follower of B.V. Narayan Goswami. There are so many things that are not going good in ISKCON. So I was actually not willing to hear from him. I wanted to escape. But I was, I mean, I could not understand what should I do at that particular moment. So Guru Mahal, there are instances where people are wearing saffron and uh, they are wearing uh, wearing tilak, uh, Vaishnava tilak, and we of course do not want to disobey them, but they will speak such things. Of course, they worship Krishna, but their philosophy is little uh, uh, not good because they are Ritviks. So, what should we? What what, what our uh, uh, attitude should be at the, at those uh, moments, Guru Maharaj? Well, we should be polite. We don't want to offend anyone. But we should avoid their association. If their association is not favorable for our devotion to Srila Prabhupada and Iskand, then uh, we, we should avoid their association. Yeah, Rupa Goswami gives advice. Uh, you know, about how to respect different grades of devotees. And there are some devotees whom, to whom we offer respect from a distance. We, we respect them, but we keep a distance. And sometimes we have to do that. Even with devotees of sorts, you know, who worship Krishna. But they're not in our line. They're not favorable to our mood of service uh, following Srila Prabhupada. So we avoid them as far as possible. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> there's sahajiyas they're also devotees of sorts but we, we, we avoid them Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So we are moving towards the end of our session here and uh, we would like to thank everybody all of you for joining in for wonderful sangha with His Holiness Girda Swami Maharaj. And I am also very, very grateful on behalf of ISKCON Bhagavat Mahavidyalaya at Govardhan. We are an educational wing of ISKCON situated at Govardhan Dham. And uh, Vedvarsity.com is our online initiative where we offer various online courses. So I request all of you to kindly go and check out our website for wonderful courses which are offered by learned and experienced senior Vaishnavas. And once again, I am very, very grateful and I would like to thank His Holiness Giriraj Maharaj for giving your wonderful association and enlightening us about how to serve personal Bhag a person Bhagavat. Maharaj very nicely explained from his own realizations and from the teachings of Srila Prabhupada. And he wonderfully answered all the queries. So we are very, very thankful to you, Maharaj. And uh, we hope and pray that you will continue to give us regular association in the future as well, Maharaj. So yes. let us all thank 
Maharaj once by chanting Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, 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 Thank you Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Thank you Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. We're going to end now. I suggest we, we conclude with Vaishnav Pranam. Yes, Maharaj. You can chant Vaishnav Pranam, Maharaj. Let us offer our respect to the desires of the Lord. Let us like the very truth to fulfill the desires of everyone. Have full compassion to the Father. Pancha Kalpa Karusha Sikha Shukha 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 Thank you very much, Maharaj. We'll end the session here. Yes. Thank you, Krishna. Good morning. Hare Krishna. Hey Krishna Guru thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. All glory to you. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you for the wonderful class. <laughs>